the butthole podcast welcome to the butthole it's your chance do your dance at the butthole it's the bit check it out i mean if the last thing i ever saw was an alien i'd die happy we just want to say before this thing starts thank you so much to our loyal listeners and here you go with another great butthole podcast brought to you by star lamar brandon Gage's Rage and Scott on the Butthole Podcast Network. What up, everybody? Welcome to the Butthole Movie Review episode. I am Scott. Welcome to the podcast, boys. How's it going? Good. Another great week. Fantastic. We had a pretty good movie this week uh, upon Star's recommendation, right? Yep. And I was surprised to hear that none of you guys had even heard of it. I don't know about Brandon. I had not. And it is older, but it's not old. 2003 is not old. Yep. I was about 12 when it came out. Nice. So yeah. I was kind of in the wheelhouse of this, like family-friendly <clears throat> type of thing. Uh, but yeah, it was one that I held near and dear to my heart from when I was a child, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Might be a Aww. different experience watching it as an adult. but <laughs> Still good, I'd say. Yeah. So it is a frustrated son tries to determine the fact from fiction in his dying father's life that's a synopsis symbol synopses it's kind of the old uh every story as it ages becomes more and more embellished the fish tale yeah yes it is no. told by the name of the movie mm-hmm. big fish i like the opening scene talking about the big fish that can't get caught i like that at the wedding yep um i don't know that whenever the old man talk though i could listen to him talk forever yeah like but even before it was to the flashbacks just him telling the stories i, I wish that sometimes they just had him tell the story <laughs> didn't go into oh the rather than the actual cinematic yeah. flashback because he was yeah. just so interesting and cool His southern draw he's definitely a storyteller i'm sure you've met people like that that just have a story for everything there's kind of an art to that tell like, the story yeah like I can tell, like, in my family, my grandpa's super good at it, and my dad's really good, and then I'm not very good at all. So I don't know if you lose that through. You probably gain it through experience. It could be that, but some people, I mean, you know. If you how... already have two good storytellers, though, maybe they just have no need for you to be a good storyteller. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. You know how, like, some people, though, when they talk about and tell stories, they really have the ability to pull you in and keep you in, engaged in it? And then there's me who rambles on about shit that doesn't really matter. Uh, doesn't have the ability to hold people's attention by it, so then I end up just cutting it short. Just shitty. Some people are very good at it. Didn't the old man say that when he was talking to the the pregnant wife or whatever? He's like, she's going off on a tangent about it, like a side story a little bit. She's like, well, no, we haven't finished this. He's like, no, we'll get back get back to that. But a good story wraps everything together. Something mm-hmm. along yeah. those lines. Yeah. So basically. As the kid got older, he started to realize that a lot of his dad's stories that he grew up on were unbelievable, weren't real, and he didn't know his father. It's like, I don't even know this guy. At his wedding, the father, as the storyteller, kind of took center stage and was telling one of his stories. The son kind of had had it, and they didn't speak for three years. They didn't speak about not speaking. There were still types of communication between them, but they didn't actually talk to Mostly each other. Mostly through the mom, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He got sick. Mom calls and says, "You really don't have much time. You need to come here." So he goes back, and that's kind of how the actual movie starts. We go there, and he starts telling these stories to his pregnant wife, who probably doesn't know him very well either, right? Because they got married and then and moved then, away. Yeah, moved away, and they don't talk. And so that's kind of where the story. I kind of see the movie as a poor man's Forrest Gump. That's exactly what I was thinking. That's, yeah. It's, you know, it's telling the story of his life. It's different. Not. Same kind of idea, though. Yeah. I definitely thought about that. There's a bunch that. of little stories that are kind of incredible. That Piecing together the memories of the his life. The only thing I thought they could have did better in that aspect is tie in, like Forrest Gump did, real things, but in a fictional sense. So, like, how he played for Alabama. You know, he did the mm-hmm. football game there. or He charmed the pants off of Kennedy. Or Nixon. Elvis Presley, that's how he got the dance. You know, things yeah. like that. I thought that would have been a fun ah, twist in this. You don't think those... I mean, I guess there was some folky stuff that was unbelievable, but you he was still, still drafted in the war, and he went to Korea, or uh, 
which freaking city did he go to? When he had to get the secret mission as an army guy? Spec. Oh, I don't know where he went there. It was, they did say Korea. Yeah, it was an Asian country, and he had to Vietnam, get Vietnam. Maybe Vietnam. It was Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah, he was drafted into Vietnam and went undercover and got the. But I suppose that's kind of the only real thing that kind of happened. You know what I mean? Well, he went to college to the college to get his wife too. I suppose there. I thought there was quite a bit of real stuff, and he fixed up the town too. Was that a real town? Was it Spectra? Yeah. Specter. Yeah. Specter. His son yeah. later on. So, home. you know, in the story, so if you guys watch the movie, you'll see that there's all these, he's kind of telling his life story, and everything's magnificent. When he was very young, he went to a witch, and they say if you look into the witch's eye, you can see how you die. And he said, you know what? I think I'd want to know how I die, because then it makes everything you do in life not scary, because you know you're not going to die from it. So he goes up, looks in the eye, knows how he's going to die. Are witches real? Not in this universe. So when he tells his kid, I saw this witch, the kid's gone, what do you mean you saw a witch? Like, there aren't any witches. And he, yeah, there is. I saw it. I saw how I die. He's totally confident in everything he says. So from that point on, he thinks he knows how he's going to die, or so he says, and it opens his life up for adventure. And they do make a comparison. He comes from a small town. He's the shit in that town. And they say, if you keep a goldfish... In a small bowl, it stays the same size. But if you put that same goldfish into larger water, it can grow up to four times its size. So that's another meaning for big fish. He was a big fish in a small pond. He wanted to get out there and become, see what he could do in the real world. So that was kind of all the amazing things he did after that told extravagantly to his son. And Miley Cyrus is in it. Just kind of cool fact. That was Sneaky before cameo. Hannah Montana, Pre- too. Yeah, several years before Hannah Montana. Well, that had been her first cameo in, in movies and in film. We can IMDb that and see. I bet it's up there. No. Be the bottom of her list. She might have been in a dad's music video or something before that. <laughs> well, we can look up her filmography. Oh, she's been in a lot of stuff. And that's when he was a child going to see The Witch for the first time, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it doesn't even have her... They didn't even show this one. Probably because it's just for that little bit. Yeah, it was literally she's got about one five seconds scene. of. So she time. is Kylie in Doc, which was a TV series ran from '01 to '03, and then Big Fish was her first movie. Okay, I never even heard of Doc. Screen, but... So let's go back to the uh, the conversation we asked off mic. If you could know how you were going to die, would you want to know how you're going to die? After seeing the movie and the way he attacked life after that, yes, I would. Make you keep you from living in fear? Yeah, yeah. But then I, you got to assume that it's right. That's the, the cynic in me would be like, how do I know that's actually how I die? Like, They know if you're going to look or not. No. Well, no, one, there's two people that looked before, right? The two brothers. Okay. That were with them. Heads. Yeah. Yeah, one died young, one died old. Okay, I was gonna say if the one dies, it's like the way that they said it was gonna happen. Then you can believe it. Then you know. You know what I mean. And then halfway through the movie, they they, they did reveal. So assuming that you would be able to know, and it's like one hundred percent factual, I agree with Gage. I'd like to know. Then you can live life without fear. You can go skydiving and not have to worry about your parachute not opening. You can. Drive fast on the highway and not worry about getting in With a crash. your eyes closed. Yeah. Like. But when he did go to fight the giant, he said, I know this isn't going to kill me, but he can still break all my bones and put me in the hospital. So there's still repercussions. <laughs> you, know, yes. you can still end up in jail. You could still end up on life support. It's just not the way that you die. Similar to Roy in Palm Springs. Dying in uh, the... Uh, ER is not the way to die. <laughs> yeah. You do not want that to happen. Great movie, by Painful the way. Death. Good pick. I don't know if I would want to know, quite honestly. I don't yeah. know. I would probably like lean no still. Yeah. I'd rather just not know. Then you think of that uh, it's that Disney show, That's So Raven. She'd have the <laughs> visions. But then what she did created the vision. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy type of thing. So what if it's the same thing there? Like You see that you die in a car accident. So you spend your whole life trying to avoid cars. Yeah. And then yeah, that's actually what ends up killing you is that you 
didn't learn how to drive and then you have to drive and then you die in the accident. Or if you just drove all the time and you knew how to drive, you might not die today. What he had, the old man, compared to like the guy who died young, he got to see he was older. Mm-hmm. So you saw that you were maybe in your 60s to 70s. Yeah. So and this is the to story he told, too. Yeah. We got to say this. No one knows what's true and what's false and what he's saying. But he, for his entire life, claims, I know how I die. This ain't it. I know how I'm and going. The end of the movie was the the little spin knob, like at the end of Inception. You didn't know if is that actually how it happened or not. We'll get into that, though, after this commercial break. Put your mic closer to your face, dude. Yeah. No. I mean, I don't think the listeners are going to complain about not hearing your voice, but it does add a little bit of they context two to weeks, what though. we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet voice is better than no voice. So he convinced the giant to leave town. Yeah, that's his, his first outing as an adult. There's this giant eating all the food, causing havoc in the town. He's like, I'll go take care of it. He goes to the giant. He says, this town's too small for you. Heck, it's too small for me. Let's get out of here. There's places with buildings as tall as the sky. <laughs> we can go there. You'll fit in. Convince them to leave. They're like, cool, let's go. They go. They reach a fork in the road. He says, you take left. I take right. We'll see what happens. While he's going through the woods, he comes upon this perfect town in the middle of nowhere called Spectre. And the person, upon arriving, asks his name, and he says, oh, well, my name is Edward Bloom. He looks, he goes, oh, you're not supposed to be here yet. So this town's got a little bit of magic seem to it. They said, but welcome. He goes there. Everything's perfect. They take his shoes. They throw it on the line. He's like, no, like this is not for me. I shouldn't be settling down yet. And there's an old poet that used to come from his hometown that's there too that's been there the entire time so he went off on his own adventure he ended up in the town and stayed there his whole life never left it he's like i don't want that get me the hell out of here so he leaves meets back up with the giant the town's got a real culty feel to it very yeah. culty they feel. lose it when they find out someone leaves because no there. one's left yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so while he's with the giant they stop at a circus and they have a big man, strong man person. And Ned's like, ha, ah, fuck this shit. My guy's bigger. Calls him in. Danny DeVito's like, holy shit, I want him in my circus. Does it. Well, this is all happening. He spots a 10, a fucking 10. Time. Across. And he says, I want that. <laughs> time stops. He goes to find her. Time starts again. And when time stops and then restarts, everything goes fast around you. So it doesn't just say stop. Once you get there. So he lost this girl. Danny DeVito knows who it is. Says, you work for me for free. I'll start giving you clues on who he is. One month. One clue a month. So he works there for three years getting stupid ass clues. Like, what her favorite flower is. How the fuck does Danny DeVito know what her favorite flower is? It's like a friend's niece or something like that. I don't know what any of my friend's niece's favorite flower is. But whatever. I digress. He finally figures out she goes to Auburn and what her name is. He goes to find her. Brings her a bunch of flowers, tries to marry her. She's already engaged to Roy from the office, who is a dickhead from his hometown. Total dickhead. Well, actually, is he he a dickhead? Oh, yeah. Or is he, because he always was getting shit on by Ed. Yeah, he hated That was another thing. He hated Ed because Ed was the, the man, but he wasn't really a dickhead. He just always came in second. So then he's getting married to this person, and he sees him coming to take his girl. I'd have reacted the same way as him. You would have beat the shit out of him even though he never fought back? Maybe. I'd try to get him to go away. That dude took all the girls at high school. He won all the games. He stepped on my head in football. I was right. He was a dick to me. You were yeah, part of that touchdown run, Roy, from he's the office. come fucking take my girl? Fuck off. Get out of here. Yeah. So I think they portrayed him like he was the bad guy, even though he wasn't really the bad guy. Roy he's didn't just even always got know, shit on. Roy didn't even know what her f- favorite flower was. And our boy Edward Bloom, he planted a whole field of those flowers from five different states. He knew everything about her. Yeah, but through nonviolence. Gets the girl. He and was able to get the girl. Roy is the one who died early on the toilet. That's it what was. Roy deserved because Don. Roy was a dick. Don. So back to the Carney situation. Two things on that. If Danny DeVito is that short, imagine how Mr. Wet Bottoms, or whatever the fuck his name was, how short he was. <laughs> 
That dude was tiny. You guys ever notice that? Is that the the guy that's the Oompa Loompa? And, yeah. Yeah. You don't I notice mean, when they're standing yeah. next to Giants, I guess. Next to Danny DeVito, though. Yeah. He was like a foot shorter than him. And Danny DeVito's like, a short shit. son of a bitch. Yeah. yeah. He's DeVito's- in a lot of Tim Burton movies. He always plays the same type of character. <laughs> so there's that. And then the other thing was, I mean, maybe it's a cynic in me, but if that fucking Carney is telling me time and time, her favorite flowers are daffodils, Daffodils. she goes to college, and it's taken me a month to figure out what her favorite flower is. Fuck That's just how de- Yo, determined he is, a- though. He wanted, he saw what he wanted, yeah. and he was going to stop at nothing to get it. Love at first sight, and it was just a different time. This was back in the probably 50s or 60s. Yeah, I'd assume Vietnam. Yeah. Vietnam shortly era. after. He worked so, there three years to figure it out. Yeah, he, and then he finally... He was dedicated. He, I mean, if you were loving first sight, I think you'd be the dedicated guy he was. If he didn't figure out that Danny Vito here. was a werewolf, he probably never would have figured it out. Exactly. He'd probably still be working at the circus. And you know what? Some of the meanest people might just be lonely. Yeah. DeVito was a werewolf, and then he just threw a stick for him, and they played fetch. He He got... Uh, our boy Bloom on the contract without even getting him to sign. Yeah. he's He had the giant sign up for a no claim, no contest con- contract. Do you know anything about this? Do you know anything about lawyers? Do you know okay, good. Sign, sign here. That's where I thought he was shady. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was shady. That, the he information he was it. giving oh, Bloom you thought was, he was legit. Lying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, every month it's like a clue that you don't think really matters. He's learning all this stuff for three years oh, good and getting here. nowhere. <laughs> I shit. thought he was going to meet her for the first time, and she wasn't actually at the school. No. Or like, or her, oh, I don't like those flowers. I like roses, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I was just making it up as he goes. Just trying to get some free labor <laughs> just, out yeah. of it. She was. It was three years long. Like, he did get free labor out of it, though. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck? You gave him a stupid clue a month? To scoop some shit? Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And put your head in between a lion's mouth and shot out of a cannon and yeah, that's true. fight a werewolf. Those are all fun, though. Then after they met... You think it's, okay, this is the end of the movie. They're going to fall in love, have a kid, get a white picket fence. No, not Edward Bloom's life. He gets a letter because he's been with the circus. No one knows where he's living. Finally gets a spot where he's staying, gets a selected service letter. He's been drafted. He's got to go away. So he's parachuting in to uh, Vietnam. There's like a talent show type thing. I don't a USO show, but for them. I don't know what it would be called. And there's this pretty... But you want to be funny there, otherwise, yeah. you're gone. Pretty girl <laughs> like singing. Like that ventriloquist. <laughs> he has a scene straight out of a Mission Impossible James Bond movie where he's Gito chopping soldiers ab- above the stage and the fighting everyone. The parachute drop onto the stage rafters. Yeah. How legendary. Beat him up, runs in the back. There's these Siamese twins that were singing, walk in on him, charms the pants off of these people. Just it the says, one half. Just half, yeah. The other half wasn't having it at first. It says, I can get you out of here. So they work together to get back. But as soon as he gets back to the United States, he doesn't have an identity anymore. Because they'll know that he went AWOL. They'll send him back. Well, the and war actually classified him as dead because he had no communication throughout the whole thing. Yeah, so they had told his, his girl that he was dead. Mm-hmm. So he gets back. He says, I need some money. I'm, I'm a good talker. I'm going to be a salesperson. Gets a sales set, traveling sales job. Selling hands. Yep. And actually, I was just reading up on it. Fun fact is, uh, what's his name? Tim Burton. He directed Edward Scissorhands as well. And they were actually going to put scissors as the fingers, but they didn't want it to tie too close into the other movie. Oh, hmm. cool. Because they did have different things on each finger. All sorts of tools. The utility. Yep. Is this when they're robbing the bank, or is that later in the movie? So he's traveling stuff. salesman, sending he's money back home. He's going to make a home. deposit, and he's still the salesman. Mm-hmm. And then the old poet shows up at the bank. They meet each yeah. other. He's like, what are you doing now? I'm here to rob this bank. <laughs> yeah, so Holds he kind of convinced the poet hey, friend, that <laughs> he needs to get out of there, too. He got stuck. His poetry was not being very good. It's No, it's on the way out of uh, the getaway car. He's got his sick-ass charger. He tells the guy that there was nothing in the vault. Because all the crooks over in Wall Street robbed them blind. They've been giving them false loans and terrible rates. And that's when 
the poet decides he needs to go be a banker in Wall Street. That's where the real money's at. Bloom, though, gave his paychecks and his stubs that he was saving up for the house to him instead. Because he didn't want him to not have as much money. Yeah. He's a good guy. <laughs> Truly a good guy. Makes good money off of the whole bank robbery and sending the guy up. They made no money. The poet goes to Wall Street, makes a million bucks, and then gave and Bloom then 10K to him. as a... Uh, Thank life you for choice career consultant <laughs> career consultant so he finally has the money to buy the white picket fence house which is what they lived in forever for. yep the house that they're currently in that he's talking and telling all these Gets stories the wife of. his her house she deserves yep um so then while he's out on his sales things he comes across the town of specter again after a huge storm came yeah. through. Noah's Ark type shit. And this town is destroyed. It's not how he remembered it at all. Everything's dead. Wood's rotten. Everything's for sale. Yep. He starts buying the whole town up and fixing it up and letting people stay there. Because he said, this place, I know I wanted to leave, but it was a magical place. I loved it when the short time I spent there. Slowly does it. Finally, there's one last house. What brought us there, though, was he con- confronted his dad about the lies. He's like, I don't believe the stories you're telling me. I think you're telling me everything fake. Growing up, he always thought that his dad was cheating on his mom. Because mm-hmm. he was always out He's of town. He was a flirter. He was very good with women. And so then he goes back to this town. And what leads um, Bloom Jr. to go there is actually finding a deed to this lady's house. So he yeah. goes there and, and asks He thought he questions. had a second house, a whole second family and stuff like that. Yep. So this isn't a story he was telling. This is a story he got from a resident of... Specter, who was a kid when he showed up there originally, the eight-year-old who stole his shoes and threw them on yep. the line. She was in love with him as an eight-year-old. He promised he'd come back, and she was a weirdo. She talked about, "Well, you're only ten years older than me, so when I'm eighteen, you'd be twenty-eight, and when you're fifty-eight, I'd be forty-eight. That's not really different at That's all. Not really that bad." He said, "It is a good <laughs> comeback, though." He goes, "It is now, though, right?" It was not weird Hollywood stuff. He just shot her down. That is yep. true. Good for you, Tim Burton. <laughs> He's not uh, on the list, by the way. Yeah. Oof. You can tell in his movies. So well. she's telling the story about how he bought the town. She wouldn't sell him her property. So he said, what if I just fix it up for you? Because it was all raggedy. Fixed it up. She was still in love with him. Even mm-hmm. after all those years. She had been married. The guy was 10 years older than her. It didn't work out. So he was right from the beginning. She that, got that married a, at 18 to a 28-year-old. That was a big age difference. Um, so she clarified that no, we were never in a relationship. We ne- he she just, did try though. She, yeah, she tried, but yeah, he puts he that last screw in house. that coat rack and he hangs the hat, and she's like, "You can just leave that there." Mm-hmm. So he gets some confirmation that he was not out doing the dirty deeds with other people. He Truly loved, him loved his mom. Why would you spend three years at a circus to <laughs> cheat on this woman? That is Come a on. good point. But according to he some, he didn't, didn't believe that he spent three years at the circus. Exactly. And he might not have spent three years at the circus. You, don't, you never know what is actually true and what's not true. You kind of find out a little bit at the you, end. That it, there's truth in it. But yes, you don't know that's what it is. is. So the whole thing, too, is there, there's a story of his son's birth. And he was out trying to catch this uncatchable fish that he's been trying to catch forever. And no $100 lure was going to work. The only way to catch it was to use his wedding ring. This is why he missed the birth of his son. So he put his wife's wedding ring on there, caught the fish with that, because the only way to get an un- or a woman to come to use a ring, is what he says, <laughs> he's caught the fish, missed the thing. And the doctor tells him, you want to know what was actually happening? He was on a sales trip, and he missed it. Like, dude, that's you came a, boring- a week early. Yeah, you came He was out of town. Yeah, he's like, that's a boring story, Dick. He wanted a story to tell you that's what so then was that when he was at specter like fixing it up is that when that happened no, no that this was is when different he was in, the in the hospital the doctor told him yeah. no i know that but i'm saying when the dad was younger was he fixing up that house or was he during the fishing trip there there might there was no fishing trip he was just he was on a business trip. on his gotcha. route he was on a sales route yeah he was a traveling salesman he's gone all the time Son said he's he's never home. He's always gone. I think the doctor so did the, say which town he was in. It wasn't Spectre. Okay. So on the way back, once the son gets back home and he's going to talk to his dad and his wife and everybody, finds out that his dad had a stroke. 
So then he rushes to the hospital. And this is where uh, his wife is in a wreck. And she's all nervous, wants to stay with him. And his son says, no, I'll stay with dad. You and my wife go home. I'll call you if anything changes. And then he's being just uh, his normal self. Not really talking to him like a worrisome son would be. Uh, And the doctor tells him that story. Yep. The truth. And then he he says that he kind of likes the truth instead of the efficient story. But probably not what his dad wanted, you know? So then the dad wakes up and then says, tell me the story about how I'm going to die. He said, "This this isn't how I go. He's on his deathbed, basically just had a stroke, died, and he said, nope, this is not how I go. I know how I go. And then the son said, tell me, and he said, you tell me. Mm -hmm. And so the son kind of learns a thing or two, starts spinning a tale. uh, I don't know if we should go into details. You don't need to get too specific about everything. (laughs) I might break a tear right now if we do. This is is the the tearjerker part of the movie. So he does, he goes Soul on. So Scott over here is just sitting here. He's like, I need Visine to get my eyes watery. <laughs> <laughs> he I goes on a whole close to crying, tall sort of tale like. like what his father would spin. And his dad just goes, yep, that's it. He dies. Uh, and then the funeral scene starts. And they kind of do a throwback to a lot of the stories that he was telling by who was showing up for the funeral. The giant. So the, the giant was... A real person in the stories, he was twelve Much feet bigger. tall. Yes. In reality, he was seven and a half feet tall. He, at the time of that filming, I think he was the tallest man alive. He has since passed away. Rest in peace. I don't know his name. But and the circus guy comes. Um, the twins show up with the twins, the, the poet. Siamese twins, <laughs> Matthew but they McGregory. actually aren't Siamese twins. So that part was made up in the story. But there were two Vietnamese twins that he made friends with that. They ran out of from Vietnam. So there's a lot of truth to the story. And the girl from Spectre said she was the witch. She's, and he's like, how can you be the witch? The witch happened when he was young. And he said, timing is weird for everything. Like, that's how he viewed me or whatever. So did, That was the, the girl from Spectre? Yeah. The one that he, that made a move on him? Yeah. So she... She was, in his eyes, the witch. Or she claimed to be somehow that. And he said, that doesn't make any sense. He saw the witch when he was a kid. and I forgot her line she says afterwards. But she also said the same type of line when they were inspector the first time. And he saw the naked woman at the lake. And she said, oh, people see all different types of things. It's just what you're looking for or something like that. She's a little weird. I'll yeah. find the that line. That lake scene it. was interesting. The, snake the naked woman? When riling up on the naked chick? And he goes to save her? No, it was more when the flood happened and he was sitting at the bottom of the lake. Oh, the naked chick. And then the back. naked mermaid came and swam and just like stared at the car and then swam away. Put her hand up on the window. Yeah. I went a little long oh. on the synopsis. I didn't want to do that, but it's hard to not mention a lot of things in the movie. We can just get to rankings unless someone else has anything to say. It was a good I movie. Nailed it. I liked it a lot. How I, I, th- like I movies. feel like based on the feeling in this room right now, this movie has a shot to be the highest strength but whole movie. It's possible. When yeah. I get chills, like at the end of a, a movie, I like it. I did crack a tear, and I did not expect that to happen. It's emotional. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I fucking thought the cyborg whole time over here. that fucking son was a shithead. I just wanted to say that. He was such a dick. Yeah. But then in the end, you're like, oh, he does have a heart. A little Unlike one. Scott. Yeah, the thing about the the stories is you never really knew exactly how much was true, mm-hmm. which is one thing I'd like to know. I don't let that bother So it, it was based in reality, and his stories were not based in reality. So, I mean, was Danny DeVito a werewolf? Probably not. That was probably made up. See, was there a giant flood? Probably not. Was Spectre actually its own town in the middle of the woods? Probably not. He just probably viewed it as this... Brand new place I've never been to that seems really nice. Yeah, is this a story about a lying dad? <laughs> it's a storyteller. Like Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. Fucking realist. 
You go first, so you just knock my score down a little bit. Do we want me to go first so you guys can drag it up, or do you want me to go first? I have so my I ranking. Drag it down. Yeah, uh, mine's pretty locked in. Already. Right after this commercial break, the butthole will get to our official butthole movie review score. Fucking cynic. <laughs> It's over a five star. And we're back with Scott's movie review of Big Fish. Scott's going to give it a seven and a quarter. Definitely a watchable movie. Not my favorite movie. What the hell? What? Did I you was think it was totally gonna be way expecting lower? a five eight. No, I did not dislike the movie, but I'm also not fucking drooling over it like you three. But if you I watched mean, the first ten minutes and the last ten minutes, you missed a, so much. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's why probably, you didn't cry like I did. Yeah, you no, didn't. You didn't I, realize what was going on. I was you guys sobbing. need to re- you guys need to realize something. This movie is a two hour movie, right? It's slightly over two hours. Yeah, we're at two. Uh, by the end of that two hours, I was so sick of getting lied to that the heartfelt moment didn't quite land. He didn't lie. He did. He embellished He's every never single story. He never told a lie in his life. <laughs> exactly. Every Boy. single story was embellished. The Southern draw. And I was so over being <laughs> lied to by two hours that I was not I don't about lie. to cry I tell stories. for a heartfelt moment. But a seven and a quarter is not a bad it's score. Not. That's I a really mean, good sure. impersonation of it, though. Oh, my God. It sounded like I was watching the movie again. <laughs> yes. I was... When I saw the giant, and I saw Danny DeVito, and I saw the twins, I cried and I cried and I cried, <laughs> and I give this. Movie I, it was one tear, and, it, and it, now it, it's a bunch of tears. <laughs> I like to Did tell you? A are story, you a melody? Damn it! <laughs> no. I'm gonna give this one a solid eight point one. I liked it a lot. I highly recommend it. That is the exact same score I had in my head. Yeah, eight point one. I really thought Scott was going to just knock mine down. I was going to go to like a 7-7 seven, seven if Scott was really low on it, but I like my rating now. I gave it an 8.3. <laughs> I, I like the movie. I th- 5.9 is that was pretty good. Give it a watch. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend watching it, but I gave it an 8.3. <laughs> no, did it's you, good. Did I, you watch it alone or did Paige watch it with you? Well, she told me before we started watching it that she really wanted to watch it, too. And I was like, oh, fucking perfect. Like, finally a movie that she wants to watch that we picked. Yeah. And she did, like, uh, Palm Springs as well. Oh, cool. She thought that one was good, too. And she recommended it to her friends. So there's, there's that. Um, but I did watch half of it. And then she kind of tailored in and out. And then I watched the second half. I had some time to kill at work today. Um, in between measures and whatnot. And I just had it on in the background. So I finished it. But I did watch. It was good. Nice. What does that average out to? Averages out to a 7.9375. And actually, today we are unveiling the butthole. What are we going to call it? The butthole scale? Butthole, movie scale. Butthole, butthole movie, movie scale. scale. That's a war workshop on that. The yep. prototype name will be the butthole movie scale. Between zero and three on the butthole movie scale is worse than waterboarding. Four through six might be tits. Six might have tits. Might have tits. Six through seven is a check it out or a good movie. Seven to eight is great. Eight to nine is a must watch. And anything above nine is a masterpiece. On our scale right now, at 7.9, it falls into the great category. Almost a must watch. Teetering. And I would say that's probably what the movie is, quite frankly. Right around there. Yeah. That's a very fair ranking. It got an 8.0 on IMDb. So we're we're right there. I don't even know why people go to that website anymore. Yeah, you know, I come to say movie the International Movie Database doesn't hold a fucking candlestick to the butthole because we're four people. They have everybody else do their work for them, and we are four people. And we're, I think and we're we've generally been lock and step with them. Yeah. And the only time That's we've 10, been ten thousand reviews to four. <laughs> We get we have a good idea of what the movie's going to be. Ranked. And you come here and you get to listen to us talk about it for an hour. Or it, yeah. if you listen to the episode or the movies that Gage picks, you, you get hours. the full breakdown of the movie. You don't even have to watch the movie. Or like Big Fish with Star, you get the full breakdown of the movie. You don't even have to watch <laughs> the movie. But he did leave out the exact ending on how the dad died. So yeah. you do have to watch it to finish that. And it it's a great movie. It it's almost a, a must watch. If Scott was just like 7.5, it'd be a must watch, probably. If Scott just had a shred of a heart, <laughs> there's this movie that. would be a must watch. I don't know. So, I watched with my mom, and she grabbed the tissue box. I said, Give me one. <laughs> Definitely a, tears out your heartstrings a little bit at the end there. 
I like that. It's a good mix. The ending of it had that when the son told the story, kind of had that, like I said, the inception teetering at the end. Is this real? Is it not real? Like, is this actually how the dad, you know, is that all made up type stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Which leads us into our super fan. I think he's a Florida Georgia Line fan. His name is Cruz. He's a Florida Georgia Line, Luke Bryan. All of them? Yeah. All the bro country. Dee Dee, (laughs) uh, what's the, Raybex? Who's the one who sings the one with them? The country pop song? Let, Kane Brown. Can it, let it be. BB Rexa? BB Rexa. Probably. Whatever. Yeah, Nonetheless. That's, that are, sounds like him. The person I know. We are watching Inception this week. And Scott, you have to watch it. I know off air, we kind of talked I about it a little bit. this is a three hour-ish movie. Watch it in spurts. Good thing we have seven days to watch it. That's true. And you have seven days as well. We actually have seven as well. Yeah, we all have seven, yeah. Let me just watch it earlier than you. Anywho, I do have a butthole five for this week. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. I even gave your pen back. No excuses this time. Damn it. Really quick, though, before we get to that, oh. Madden comes out t- uh, tomorrow. I'm, pre- I'm down if on it. If you pre-ordered Madden, it comes out tomorrow. So I can go pre-order it right now? Yeah, so if you get home and pre-order it, you'll it'll download tonight, and you'll be able to play it tomorrow when you get home from work. <sighs> little disclaimer. Can you... It, just as a side note, can you download games before they come out so that you can play them right away? Yep. Or can you not download them until they come out? Nope. It'll download in the background and be ready, but then it won't let you play it until 11 o'clock tonight. Mm. I would buy a physical disc anyway. Two hours and 42 minutes is the runtime for Inception. With Which, credits, has two everyone and a half hour here movie. seen yep. Inception? I've I seen have, it like eight times. It's been a long time for me. I have not seen the whole You've thing. You've never seen it? No. So <laughs> this, the, the email asked us, to use our like solid butthole brains to pull out the symboly and synopses and synopses of it because no one understands it. It seems like, and just be according to South Park, just because it's confusing does not mean it's fucking cool. But I remember the movie being pretty fucking cool. So. <laughs> it's confusing we'll enough to make it pretty fucking cool. Yeah. I've seen it eight times and I still don't really have a fucking clue what's going well, on. I'll just do my. I normal have to thing deliver this I... pizza. I'm gonna go in. All the dream jumping Stan, and I'm fucking trying to get in Stan, step with Stan, your consciousness. Yeah. It's fucking gold. I might have to do some read-ups after I watch it this time just to see other people's opinions as well because I thought I understood it, but and maybe where, I didn't. Where's the movie available? Oh, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. In the Prime Video. Cool, yes, sir. Brandon's Butthole 5. Yes, so everybody knows the rules, but I'll explain them anyways. You have 30 seconds 35. to name the top five in whatever category I give you. Uh, it doesn't matter what order they're in. You'll get a point for whatever answer you answer, whatever. If you, there's a tie, 6 through 10, 20 second tiebreaker. If there's a tie after that, 11, back and forth, whoever gets the right answer first. Today, it is the top 10 highest grossing actors of all time. The 10 top grossing actors of all time. We're still doing five? Yes, just five. And while you're listening, check out Thrive Fantasy using the plug Bud, and you will get $20 into your account and whatnot. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Gage, you have five more seconds. Four, three. I'm just kidding. It's all done. Fuck. I fucked this up, I think. I only I have, I have four. Up. This is a tough one. I only have four. We yeah. will, we will go with... Did anybody have less than four? No, nope. I put five, but they're mostly recent, so... Okay. Would you count if I had listed a movie, the main actor from that one? Absolutely not. No. Fuck, <laughs> oh, I just remembered it. Oh, I'm All right, so... you go first. No, I can go first. Star goes last, first. Last you, you won I last have time. Robert Downey Jr. Okay. Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. All right. Denzel Washington. Okay. And Will Smith. All right. Damn. Scott, you will go second. I had Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, Will Ferrell, Adam Sandler. Gage. Tom Cruise was on my mind for about 20 seconds, but I couldn't put him down. So I have Will Smith, Robert De Niro, Brad Pitt, and Matt Damon. Do we all blow? 
<laughs> we you might do all, all blow. One. Yeah, you all blow pretty bad. We do have a winner. Yeah. With one? With one. Fuck. Holy shit. Wait, was I the only one that had Tom Cruise? Yeah. You were? I think I win. You Tom win. Cruise was not in the top five. What? Wow. He was in top ten. I think he came in six, actually. Damn. Robert Downey Jr. came in at seven. Johnny Depp, Michael Caine, and Gary Oldman. Johnny Depp was the one that came to the right oh, to my mind I right as it stopped. Won. Yep. It's Damn. me, isn't it? Scott won with Tom Hanks. Hanks? Yeah. Yep. And you would have tied it as well if you would have had it right. You were thinking Forrest Gump, but you couldn't think of the no, name. No, Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Oh, I thought you said Hanks. That's because as soon as he said Tom Cruise, he goes, Impossible. <laughs> yeah, I was pissed. It started out, Harrison Ford is the number one grossing actor. Uh, it doesn't give me numbers, so. Don't fact check me. Samuel L. Jackson is number two. He's on my fucking list, and I took him off for Denzel Washington. <laughs> Tom Denzel. Hanks. I literally erased them. I was like, Denzel's done bigger movies. Four, I can't believe you guys didn't get Morgan Freeman. He's in a Freeman. lot. Yeah. And then Eddie Murphy yeah, uh, was five. Murphy? Yeah. No fucking way. What is Dude, Murphy quit in? your bitching. I won, it's okay? It's a good Beverly bet. Hills it's a good Cops b- movies. Butthole five. It's like from the nineties. How could he be a top grossing? Wow. It's not. It's how much money he got paid. Yeah, that's what we're we're not thinking. How much money the movies made? It's how much they got paid. How to much be money in the movies. actors have made? But don't you think actors would make a shitload more now than they did in the nineties? That's why I thought Robert Downey Jr. would be on it because right. he's got like fifty million. Or for, Will Smith or Brad Pitt or the guys who were still fucking acting. Unless well, this Hanks entire is. list is wrong, but that's what well, they told okay, me. Well, okay, so Tom Hanks, was he's fucking 70-some years old. He's been in how many movies, and he's adrenochromed out of his fucking ass. He's a, way older than that. Yeah. You're Green Mile. He's like 108. Yeah. That's a real, that's a documentary. He's got 50 more years of being in movies than the next closest person you could ever even think of. And, and that includes dead. Clint Eastwood. Clint I like it. Make Good bud hole five. This was from... Cinemablend.com. That's a very reputable source. I've never heard of them. <laughs> but you know what? I got the I'm win. I'm to see when this article was even written. It might have been like written, 1991. It was written in 2001. <laughs> the hey, first fucking document do on the internet. I have a beef. Is it based off the movies they were in? I have no idea. Does I it even really matter? I won, okay, everybody? Top 10 grossing up. actors of all time. Yeah, but does it say how much they got paid or how much their movies made? Because Tom Hanks has directed a shitload. Well, and Samuel L. Jackson and Harrison Ford have been in Star Wars, which gross a shit ton. This whole fucking top five. No, based on Brandon's parameters, though, that's right. (laughs) It says, records were made to be broken. That generally seems to be the overall theme surrounding the release of Star Wars The Force Awakens. Maybe this is a couple years old. However, the film itself is not the only part of breaking records these days. According to Box Office Mojo, the film's immense success at the box office has allowed Harrison Ford to now officially become the highest grossing actor of all time. And then so it, goes I, into it saying, was a little misunderstood. You didn't say it wrong or nothing. I just misunderstood it a little bit. I'm, re- I'm, I'm not responsible don't. for how you guys understand what I'm saying. Holy shit, it's getting dark out. <gasps> Might be time for the After Dark podcast. Go jerk off. The bleep. Make sure to check us out on Facebook, Butthole. Check us out on Twitter as well, at Official Butthole. Instagram, at Official Butthole. TikTok, at Official Butthole. And if you have questions or comments, email us at OfficialButthole at gmail.com. Also, make sure to check out our Teespring website where we have sweatshirts and t-shirts and our website itself where we post blogs and whatnot. Both of the links will be posted in our description for the episode. Please leave a rating on whichever platform you're listening on, as well as make sure to hit that subscribe button so we can continue to bring you the great content we create, as well as make it even better for the future. We love you all. Peace out.